So last time we learned about just light. Light and waves, yep. But this is like a this unit on the atom. This is chemistry class. So so why it's about? like a physics term. Yeah. What's up with that? Uh, well, you see, guys, the atom and light are kind of connected. Inextricably connected. So we're going to connect how the, what we've been learning about light with the atom itself. And it really answers sort of a kind of a cool question. Where does light come from? Light bulbs. Something like that. The sun. Yeah, well, let's talk Stars. about how light works. So things you probably do or do not know. Like Pink Floyd. Pink Floyd, yeah. So if you've got light, and if light goes to, white light goes through a prism, it separates into the colors of the spectrum. Uh -huh. So this is something that's true. You've got that spectrum, and it's a uh, uh, Roy G. Biv, right? Mm -hmm. They're probably learning this in elementary school somewhere. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. These are the colors it separates into. In that order. So scientists have known this for like ever. I mean, my five-year-old knows it. Your five-year-old. Yeah. So this is something that we know about light, but this teaches some interesting things. So here's an interesting thing that happens. If you take a tube filled with hydrogen gas, so this tube is filled with hydrogen gas, and then you pass this through a prism. Or some sort of refracting device. Yeah, there's more than one way to do this. It splits up, interestingly enough, into only four specific colors. So or down here in a more specific one, you can actually see scientists then measure the wavelengths of the light. Here we have 410.1 nanometers and 433, 486, and 656. Where's the rest of the light? Where's this light and this light? It's not there. It's not there. Hmm. So scientists have actually known about this phenomenon for a long time, but they couldn't explain it because this is only filled with hydrogen gas. So if it's only filled with hydrogen gas, there must be something about hydrogen that's causing this to happen. Yeah. No. In fact, yeah. you know, it's not just true about, say, hydrogen. No, each element has its own individual fingerprint, if you yeah. will, of the, amount, the, the wavelengths of light that are produced. So if you yeah. did the same uh, process with helium, you would find these lights. With iron, you'd find these colors. And neon, you'd find, and they're all different. Mm. Hmm. And they've used that for some cool stuff, which we'll talk about in a minute. But what does that tell us about the atom? So why don't we let's take a look at this? How take this a look works. at this. How this works um, on the video clip. So folks, here I am. I'm looking at. Um, I've got a spectral tube right here. So I'm going to apply a whole bunch of electricity. This could be like 10,000 volts or something like that. Do not put fingers in sockets when you turn on. Duh. That's one of those duh moments. And in this tube, let me put it back here. I have argon gas. So this is a, a tube filled with argon gas. I'm going to turn it on, and it's going to make a light. It's like basically a light bulb. You've probably seen neon lights. And so as I turn it on, it makes a really cool purple color. All right. Now, the thing that's kind of cool that you can do is that you can take your cool glasses that I was wearing for our lightsaber fight, and these cool glasses then break up the light into a spectrum of colors. Okay. And so we'll see if we can do that with our. Uh, does that make it? It does. And so does it split it apart? Uh huh. Oh, how cool is that? So you can see as you're looking. What do you see, Mr. Sam? I see a bunch of different colors. I got a purple line and a green line and maybe like a red line, and possibly some yellow in there. Okay. But we can see distinct colors that are not in the original color of the light. We have the, the colors all split up. Okay. Now, let's now do that and um, let's. Shot. Oh, nice. Woo! Okay, that was no problem. <laughs> All right, and I have another spectral tube, and you've seen these before. This one's filled with xenon gas. And so I expect to see something different. You'll see lines like we just did a minute ago, but you should see different lines because it is a different element. We'll talk about that in a minute, too. All right. Oh, wait. Nice blue, color. blue color this time. I put on my glasses. So Mr. And... Sam just putting the glasses on the... Uh, yeah, not quite as, as good as the last one. We got a little light coming in through our door there, but I've got a, a blue line. It's like a little bit of yellow, maybe a little bit of red. These are not quite as distinct as the last one. Yeah, I'll probably have too dim of a bulb. But I think you get the idea that every element has its own set of spectral lines. And actually, the more interesting thing is not the lines that are there, but the lines that are not there. Why don't we see all Roy G. Biv? Oh. Why don't we see those? And we'll talk about that. And we'll talk about that. That was. That was really cool, Mr. Sanders. It's very, very cool. 
So now the next question I want to ask Mr. Sims is, well, so what? So yeah. if you know all this stuff, how can it be used? Well, guess what? Have you ever been to the sun, Mr. Sims? Um, no. No. How come? Um, it's kind of hot there. Yeah, yeah. See, the sun is like, like I think the surface of the sun, I think I know this, it's about, uh, I think it's like 8,000 Kelvin, maybe 6,000. Well, that's about 6,000 to 8,000 Kelvin. That's hot. Oh, uh -huh. It would like melt you. I think it would boil you. It would be, yeah. it would be very hot. Not a very good thing. So guess what? Uh, if you point um, a, a like a spectroscope mm -hmm. and a refractor, like a prism, or a refractor deal mm -hmm. at the sun, you guess what you get? You get this pattern right here. This is uh, from the sun. And they draw these um, graphs. We care about these graphs actually. And they can actually determine which particular elements I are like a refraction. Sun. Like it's diffraction. Yeah, you refraction. Say refraction? I don't know. Yeah, it is diffraction. Yeah. You're diffraction. Okay. And so this is, you can like point these things at different stars. Yeah. And when you point them, you can say, well, that star is mainly made of hydrogen right. and helium, which is most stars are. But you can find all the other elements. Yeah, there's a really cool. When I lived in California, there's a place called the uh, Griffith Park Observatory. It has mm -hmm. a big solar telescope there. And you can actually look through this little doohickey and you can see the spectrum from the sun. And you can see these little lines that are distinctly. Um, there to tell you what the sun is made of, or what your yeah. atmosphere is made of, things like that. So that's that's cool. cool. Yeah. The other thing that it tells us about the atom is it actually tells us the atom has specific energy levels. Mm. And so here are the colors um, from a particular element. I'm not sure this is a real element. But if you remember, um, the atom is tell right up there. Remember, the atom actually has specific energy levels, which they call orbitals. And an electron can move from the E2 to E1. Now, if you drop it from E2 to E1, it's going from a high energy to low energy. Higher energy to low so energy. So it has to release that energy somehow. And it releases it, in this case, as red light. Or if it falls from, say, E3 to E2, that produces a specific color of light. Okay. So uh, that's important to understand. So this kind of answers the question, where does light come from? The sun. No. The light bulb. Uh, no. It comes from electrons moving from in the light bulb well yeah and in the sun yes you see ah! atoms everything is made of atoms and yes. every all atoms have electrons uh -huh. and electrons uh, uh move now move is sort of a weird term we'll talk about that in a minute but let's say for the sake of argument it moves when it falls from e2 to e1 it gives off a very specific color of light let's say this is uh 621 nanometers or something like that should it be shorter uh, Long oh, wavelength, right. low energy. Yep, so that's probably 700-ish. Let's we'll call it 700 nanometers, yeah. whatever. So let's do that 700 nanometers. And if it falls from here to here, it gives off purple orchid light. Maybe it's 450 nanometers. But it's a very specific color of light. Right. And so when the electrons fall from a higher energy level to a lower energy level, that's where light comes from. So here's what I want you guys to do. I want you to pause the video, and I want you to write a quick little sentence or two about where light comes from. Okay, so now let's let's kind of fill in our blanks. Okay, light comes from electrons. Electrons falling. Falling. Now we say falling because they don't in really quotation fall. mark because they, they don't uh, they don't physically drop from one to another. It's like it's in the higher spot and then it's yeah. in the well, lower spot. Let's talk about that in a minute. I think yeah. I got a slide on that. So more specific, electrons must first be excited. <laughs> They must get, you have to get them, they, they, they like to live at a lower energy level, yeah. which we talked about before. Yeah. And then they must fall, fall. Not really fall, but yeah. go back down Quotation to a fall, lower. Back to a lower energy level. Okay? Yep. So what does this tell us about the atom? Electrons are, now here's a big fancy word. Quantized. What that means is they can only be in specific places, though they can only have specific energies, they cannot have energy in between those specific values. And to, to expand that, the electron cannot be anywhere in between those energy levels. It is either in this one energy level or it is in the other energy level, never in between. To illustrate this, Mr. Sands, I think we probably should uh, do something. Okay. All right, so let's uh, watch a quick little video clip here, all right? So we want to learn about where light comes from. Well, light comes from atoms. And so I'm going to be an electron. Do I look like an electron? OK, I am. An electron in an atom. And SAR over here is going to just be the energy source. So she's going to like 
hit me, okay? Not, not physically, but she's going to throw things at me, okay? So, Sara, go ahead. She throws to me. Oh, it hit me. Oh, I jumped up. I'm on another higher energy level. And I usually don't like to live at a higher energy level, so I will, so what was called absorption. I'm going, to, I'm going to emit this light, throw it back to Sara, and as I do that, I fell to the ground, and I emitted some energy. A specific color of light. That was a color of light that went out. So she hit me with the tennis ball. Now she's going to hit me harder with the, the duct tape. Oh, ooh, it hit me. Knocks me way up here. Oh, I'm far from the ground. I don't like being far from the ground. So now the energy needs to come outside of me. And so I'm gonna, I want to get rid of this. I'm going to throw it away. This will be a higher energy. So maybe it's like purple light. And I'm going to throw this back to Sarah. And boom, I fall back down to the ground. Hurt my knees. And <laughs> no, I didn't. And um, I emit a greater amount of light. That was emission when I threw at, at uh, Sara, and it was absorption as I, as I went up, right? She, oh, got hit. I got absorb, absorption, emission. You got it? Good. Well, that was pretty cool, Mr. Uh, I think that hopefully I'll understand it's kind of weird. It's either here or here or here, but never in between. Mm -hmm. That's a weird thing to be honest. Yes. That is like, can you start? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Hey, look, it's Star Trek. Hey, Star Trek. Fire or torpedo. Yeah, that's, that's the phone torpedo. But it's like shooting light. So, hey, it's a phone. A phone is a little particle. So, I'll hold it the sky. So, an electron fall, you know, so you just learned about, it ball. gives off one photon of light. Now, of course, uh, when you turn a light bulb on, it gives off many, 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 many photons. Mm -hmm. but many, many electrons are being excited and falling down. Mm -hmm. So it's a particle of light or a packet of light, is what you're saying. So yeah, it's just a chunk of energy. And, um, and it's way smaller than the light. Yeah. So, folks, that's where light comes from, and that's the kind of concept here. <laughs> way cool. Give me up, Scotty. All right! Can you give me more? I'm giving a rush, you've got, Captain! Okay, bye.